Здравствуйте, товарищи, and welcome to a let's play of what I think might be one of the most underrated strategy games out there, and that is Hegemony Wars of Ancient Greece. And let me preface this by talking about how I ended up deciding that I was going to do this let's play. And I was just sitting there thinking, and I was thinking, man, Rome 2 is really close to release. Like, it is just over a month before it comes out. And that got me from one thing to another, and I got into this whole kind of ancient warfare vibe. And I wanted an ancient warfare strategy game to play, but I didn't just want to go back to Rome. So I was looking through my library, and I'm like, oh man, Hegemony, that's obvious that I should play that game. And then I thought, hey, this is like a game that not a lot of people know about, and I think they should. So why not just uh, dive in and do a let's play of it? And uh, here we are. I also uh, have had the chance to talk with the lead programmer for uh, Longbow Studios, which are the guys who made this game, uh, Rick Jorgensen. I interviewed him in a podcast. Uh, God, it must have been like a year and a half ago. And uh, that was that was pretty interesting. He's a, he's a really cool guy. And uh, I ended up buying this game in a Steam sale. And then when I was doing my website, I was still doing my website. Uh, he emails me personally, and he's like, "You know, you you obviously like strategy games. I can see by the kind of stuff you do, and I really think you should check out our game. You should you should check out Hegemony." I'm like, "Dude, I've already bought your game. I already played your game. Your game is great." And then one thing led to another, and he ended up coming on the podcast, and uh, so on and so forth. And they're also working on a sequel, which I'm really excited for, which was supposed to come out like last year, but still hasn't come out, and I'm. I'm worried about the status of it but I hope one day it'll service but uh it's set it, it's you know the same premise Hegemony 2 but it's kind of set in the same it's set in an ancient another ancient battlefield it's set in uh Caesar's conquest of Gaul and hugely excited for that one whenever uh it ends up coming out so anyway let's kind of get into the game and I'll, I'll tell you what we're going to be doing the game comes with the uh, three campaigns and the first one is Philip of Macedon, where you start off like uh, as Macedon with a tiny tribe, uh, and you eventually start taking over all their nearby tribes and take over all of Greece and become this, you know, super powerful hegemon of the, you know, of the area. And Philip of Macedon, if you don't know, is Alexander the Great's father, and he's kind of credited with setting the table for uh, Philip, uh, Philip the, not Philip, sorry, Alexander the Great's conquest, his great conquest in Persia, because he was the guy who took uh, Macedon from this tiny little tribe and turned it into this, this, you know, power in Greece that modernized the army, and then he died, and then a Alexander the Great gets this, the most advanced army of the time, and then he uses it to go over and smash Persia. But it also has a... Uh, Two chapters, uh, sort of dealing with the Peloponnesian War, the wars against uh, Athens and Sparta. And then it has a sandbox mode where you can play as any of the countries or tribes in the game. And we're going to be doing the sandbox mode because, to me, that's the most fun. And as you can see, there's a crap ton of different uh, tribes and kingdoms and countries to play as. You know, the, the Athenians, Crete, Illyria, uh, of course, Mac, uh, Kingdom of Macedon is there, Sparta, the Persian Empire, and so on and so forth. But we're going to be playing as the Spartans because everybody loves the Spartans. I actually love the Spartans. They're my favorite uh, uh, race or faction or whatever to play as because they get really good uh, spearmen and... That's, that's kind of helpful to have really good spearmen. So we're going to be playing as Sparta, and I'll try and keep the 300, and this is Sparta jokes to a minimum because they're kind of done to death. So without further ado, let's just uh, move on into the game here. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about how the game is played, because... Uh, the game is, is, is quite an interesting setup, and uh, it's pretty unique, and it kind of, it, it does a lot to kind of merge the turn-based strategy elements with real-time strategy elements, and it does it pretty well. It does it one of the best uh, I've seen of, of any game that, that tries to do something that uh, probably, maybe second only to like Sins of a Solar Empire or something, but it has been a little bit of time 
um, to, since I played the game, so I'm going to have to spend a little bit of time familiarizing myself with uh, everything. So, you collect uh, gold, and but you don't collect gold in sort of the, the traditional sense. Um, basically, your gold is a, is a fixed number. And as you hire more units and workers and everything, um, your, your, the amount you're spending is increasing. So you can't spend more than you take in, essentially, with, uh, with your units. So that's, uh, that's very important. And you get more gold by capturing mines and then uh, or capturing cities and, and other types of things. And, and building trade routes and that's another important function of the game is that you can see when we zoom out we've got all these different cities all these Spartan cities and you can see the dotted lines and those are our trade routes and trade routes supply the cities with uh, things predominantly like food food is probably the most important aspect of the game and, and food comes from farms and you can see we've got little trade oxen and they're taking the food to the cities and if your city doesn't have food, it's not supplied with food, um, eventually morale will go down and they'll start to riot and rebel and, and things will get really, really nasty. So you always want to make sure your empire has enough food to sustain itself and the, the cities are all well fed and everybody's happy and good or uh, things are going to go to hell in a handbasket real fast. But also, your army needs food. So let's find some armies. Here are some... Uh, Spartan hoplites, along with uh, some spearmen, they're just kind of chilling out. And let's see, uh, as they march around, uh, they will consume food. And you can see down here, there's uh, the amount of food that they have. And if they run out of food, uh, they don't die, but they start to lose morale. And when they have no morale, they're pretty much ineffective. Like if uh, army has no morale and it meets another army in the field of battle they'll just run they'll just immediately scatter and flee and uh that'll be that so you always want to make sure your army is uh is well fed and you can get food by pillaging nearby farms taking it from cities or just making sure your guys are in a well supplied area so that's kind of a basic overview of the game my first move that i'm going to make is I'm going to do an invasion because we're Sparta and awesome, but uh, the invasion may not be where you think. Uh, my first invasion is going to be the island of Crete. So we're going to do an amphibious Spartan invasion of Crete, which is pretty badass. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to create boats to take us there. So we can go to one of our nearby coastal cities. And click create unit. We're going to create a a, tori, uh, a boat here. And we're going to create a couple of them on nearby coastal cities. And one of the things you'll notice is that your units are tied to the city from which they are produced. So, oftentimes, uh, I can't, I'm not sure if it says the city that they're... Yeah, so... It'll say the city that these units are attached to. Like these are Spartan hoplites, and they're not just Spartan hoplites in the sense that they belong to the Empire of Sparta. They belong to the city of Sparta itself. So if we go find some other dudes, and uh, we'll unpause the game and move them out. See, they're a Spartan hoplite brigade of um, you know the city from which they originated from. And when a unit fights in battle, it doesn't necessarily die. Like the units themselves will die, but the the unit, or sorry, like the, the men themselves will die, but the unit will live on. And if they retreat, they retreat back to their home city, and then their home city starts to replace them with recruits. So let's say you have a bloody battle, and one of your units, Regiments is depopulated to two men. Those two men will retreat and they'll retreat back to the city and then the city will start to rebuild that regiment with the recruits it has in its city walls. So we're building three ships and let's start to uh, amass our army here. I think we'll probably need to take four. We'll need four. 
war ships to carry all of them. So we'll start to amass our army on the coast. We're we'll taking some hoplites. I'm going to be taking two hoplite divisions and two ballista divisions. I don't think I have ballistas in any of my other cities. And off, off they go. Off to a mass with the... Because a ship can only carry one regiment at a time. Uh, looks like some of them are almost done. As you can see, as we recruit more units, our income versus expenses go up. Let me just make sure all my mines have enough workers in them. Great, all my mines have workers. So we're good. I don't really need to be. These guys can go. You guys can all chill out at home or something. We don't need you out in the field right now. It looks like most of our ships are done. Another thing, you can only travel on water uh, during months that aren't winter. During the winter months, it becomes extremely... Naval, naval uh, travel becomes impossible, virtually. And uh, I believe all... Land routes are shut down as well. I mean, sorry, all sea trade routes are shut down as well. So once we get those ballistas up and running, we'll be ready to uh, start our invasion of Crete. I got one ballista done. So did I tell you guys, I was uh, in LA for the weekend, spent three weeks there, and I uh, figured I should like mention this now, it's, I've been kind of under wraps about it, considering what, what happened uh, the last time, but uh, I started I started dating someone, and like the last time, I thought, well, um, I was dating someone, and I, I told the internet about it, didn't end very well. So I've been keeping it under wraps uh, for the most part, but uh, she does live I in LA, and uh, which sucks. But the fortunate thing is that I do um, that. It's feasible for us to uh, visit each other at least once a month, and it's feasible for her if she wants to come and stay here in Canada for her to stay um, for a pretty extended period of time. So I would, it's actually the, uh, you know, obviously it's a recent development and this is my first time in LA and it was, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, it was something interesting, you know, it was a, it's a very, there's just so much to do in that city. You'll never run out of things to do in LA in a million years. There's just you know, restaurants and, and attractions and shows and everything going on all at the same time. So you'll just, you'll never be bored. You'll never find you never be in a position where you're like oh I can't think of anything to do in LA but like it's just it's just so many people it's just like overbearing like we're, we're taking we're, we're trying to get from like point A to point B in Los Angeles and it takes a friggin eternity and we're on the freeway, and the freeway has like six lanes of traffic, which is more <laughs> lanes of traffic than I've ever seen in my life. And we're still in a traffic jam. And I'm like, there's fucking six lanes of traffic here. How can we still be in a traffic jam? This doesn't make any sense. 
All right, we've got our army units uh, loaded up and we're uh, ready to go. But it was mostly uh, I was there to visit her, her family and uh, and her friends, and you know she was there so she could show me off to them, or so to speak. And once our chips kind of get their acts together, uh, they'll be good to go. All right, the Spartan art and Spartan invasion has been launched. And I got to meet her parents, and, and uh, my girlfriend's uh, she's Indian, so I get to meet her, her parents, and they're like a, they're like an Indian couple, and uh, her dad's obviously pretty like pretty hardcore, religiously Sikh, and uh, <laughs> he spent a lot of time like lecturing me about like uh, the Sikh religion and like telling me what they believe and that type of stuff. The cool thing about like Sikhism is that they don't really. They're not into converting people. Oh, okay. So here we go. Here's something. Uh, anyway, uh, the cool thing about the AI in this game is the AI is, is pretty aggressive and they're constantly attacking. But they're not always attacking to destroy you. They Sometimes they attack just to piss you off. Sometimes they attack... To burn your, to burn your supply lines, burn your farms, pillage your resources, and just run away, and it just slows you down, or will turn cities against you because they don't have enough food, or make sure your army's out of position, and it's just really cool because it's not often that an AI in a game um, decides like not to go for the killing blow. Usually, it's like they they. Like AI and any kind of uh, RTS, or their whole point is never to like outright just harass you and piss you off and play this kind of longer meta game. Their goal just seems to always see if they can kill you outright and build up enough units to kill you outright. Not so much in this game, so it's it's pretty interesting in that sense. So we can see that the I assign whoever these guys are. I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing their name. Don't ask me to pronounce Greek names. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a slaughterhouse. So they're marching into my territory. I'm sending some of my Spartan hoplites from the north and south to meet them. But anyway, we can see that we have spotted Crete. Now they are sending quite an army. I think I might need to send some more men. But fortunately, Spartan Hoplites are pretty damn good. So we can see, you know, the game isn't the best looking game in the world. But that's okay. And we're going to have a, an engagement here. The foothills. We have to try and punch our way through. I hope that Spartan Arms are enough to do it. But uh, we should also, we're going to have to also same time get ready for our landing in Crete so as you can see they're stopping our our, uh, our supply lines and trying to cut the city off uh, from its food source however it's still okay because uh, fortunately they caught our Spartan Spartans out of position and we're able to uh, force a retreat on them. See that they'll either they'll either be captured by the enemy, or they'll flee back. Uh, back home, in which they'll be replenished. So now we're already fighting on two fronts. Oh, this is not going well. At least I can lure these guys into the range of my city defenses, which they'll be able to do some damage there.
Okay, well, this is not good. I landed my troops too close to the city. Fortunately, my ballistas got off in time. Alright. Well, Spartan Hoplites did their best. But once again, are forced back. These fucking skirmishers are pissing me off. Anyway, so on this front, uh, we may have lost one ship, but our army is unloaded successfully. And fortunately, Sparta has lots of recruits, so they're able to replenish their men quickly. And we're going to be able to force uh, away our enemies from the city. But not before they do some damage. But we're going to be, we're, we're going to take our first Cretan city. No problem. Sparta is defended. And see, most of our cities are there. They're, they're just fine. There's like no problem with any of our cities anywhere. But they just managed to kill men, raid our supply lines, and just be an overall nuisance. But as you can see, at least we invaded Crete all right. And we're forcing away these Peltists. And these enemies will be crushed. And next time, I'm going to make sure I don't underestimate them and make sure I keep plenty of men by that city. So, one interesting thing about the game is that uh, there's unrest in cities. And one of the ways, there are several ways you can quell that unrest. One is by uh, stationing men there. Another way is by destroying the the walls, which sounds kind of counterintuitive, but when you think about it, is is pretty nifty and makes a lot of sense. That basically, that if a city is walled, it believes that it can overthrow you and defend itself better. So if yeah, it's a walled city, and uh, it's gonna say, "Ha, oh, screw you! Guess what? We don't want any part." of your uh, empire anymore well then they can they can throw you out of the city and then if they have walls around them they'll have a better chance of surviving your next attack if they don't have walls then oh no you can just sweep back in there and kill them all if they decided to rebel so one of the things you can do if you don't have enough money to put enough men in uh, in a city is um, you can destroy the walls and I forget how the hell you can do that but there, there should be a there we go so I'm going to destroy their walls on the city 
have one of the hoplite groups dismantle the walls. And, oh, also, you can uh, either capture enemy units, and what that does, it turns them into slaves that you can then set to work on your mines or whatever else, uh, or you can just alternatively outright kill them. I should have outright killed them, but I accidentally captured them. So now I've got a bunch of slaves that really are useless. So now, the walls are dismantled, I can recruit some spearmen there, and they'll be able to quell or the resistance in the city and, and keep it under, under control. I don't know what has happened to my other group of... Oh, I must have lost some of my... ballistas in the siege. So, that being said, we'll send one of our cities back, or one of our ships back, and, and grab re-grab that ballista, and everything will be okay. Oh, I need to take that mine too. That's also going to be a big thing. So let's march on to our next Cretan city. One of our Spartan groups is, is running out of food. So we're going to need to go to a nearby farm and, well, take that food from them. Also, we can alternatively connect uh, our Cretan city to one of our ah crap mainland cities and that will hopefully allow it to bring in food and supplies because right now it's out of food and this farm is not producing enough food to to sustain the city meaning that it could rebel against us at any time. So I'm going to have my men march to this next farm. Oh wait, never mind. There's a city right here. Oh, see, look, it rebelled against us. Because there's not enough fucking food. Fortunately, that gives the opportunity for the farm to uh, produce some food for our boys. And it will not it will not take much effort for us to retake the city. So essentially, this Let's Play can go on forever. And eventually, there's going to be a point where we're going to have to call it quits. But... Because I, I, I don't know if it's, it's really possible to take everything. So anyway, now that we've got uh, most of this shit de dealt with, let me, let me tell you about the, the story about stuff, my stuff in, my stuff in L.A. But <laughs> so I, I meet her parents, and uh, dad's, her mom doesn't speak English. Um, well, she can apparently understand it, but she can't speak it. Her dad speaks it fluently, but he's just got uh, a thick accent, so it's tough to uh, understand what he's saying sometimes. Oh shit, this one of my 